Hello awesome people, this is Jude from Awesome LCG. Today we are going to create a liquid crystal iridescence looking shader uh, with my Android shift. If you want to skip the intro and go straight into the shading uh, part, the timestamps are in the description. So first of all, what is iridescence? Iridescence is this uh, colorful phenomena that we noticed on oil slicks, soap bubbles, certain rocks and bugs, where it reflect the colors differently. For us, it's gonna be uh, one that's based on the angle we are looking at the thing. Anything that faces the camera will have a certain color. Anything that facing away from the camera will have a different color. Okay, so I have a fresh Maya here. Let's make some quick crystals. In the modeling, in the modeling area, go to generate this menu. We're gonna go to paint effects, fun mesh, and crystals. When you click on the crystal, Maya, the tool is gonna be a uh, the brush tool and you will be able to draw crystals right now this is too small for us so we're gonna hold B and left mouse to scale the size of the brush I think this looks like a good scale create a nice shape that you're happy with oh, that's too weird mm. so what I'm doing is I'm basically drawing with the left mouse and undoing it Till I get my, till I get something cool. Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, that's good. So now we have paint effect crystals. First we have to convert these things into polygons. Select the stroke, the gray color right here, and go to modify, convert, paint effects to polygon, option box. And we're gonna get this option. Just to make sure we are in the same setting, we'll reset it and we'll turn on the quad out output and press apply. Now we have a uh, polygon crystals. First of all, let's delete the history so we don't have to worry about the paint strokes. So we go to modify, I'm uh, sorry, edit, delete by type, history, and we can delete the curves. Right now this has uh, some kind of a paint effects uh, Maya shader, we don't want it. We are gonna render it with uh, Redshift, so we're gonna assign a new redshift material so right click assign new materials we're going to navigate to the redshift tab and we're going to select a redshift material let's check how the UVs are looking because we are going to use a noise that's going to be applied through the UVs we want to make sure the UVs are correct uh, they're not like stretching or anything so we go to modeling UV editor if you check the menu I mean if you check the viewport you can see the UVs are kind of stretching so I'm going to fix that. I select all the UVs and I'm and I'm gonna scale them in X. I just want to make sure I don't have this uh, stretchy looking uh, yeah see these are kind of stretching on the so we're gonna make sure we don't have that. Yep, that looks good. I'm gonna scale it back to to fit it inside a UDIM. All the UVs are overlapping right now. It doesn't matter for us. It's okay for us to use. Let's duplicate this, Control D, and scale the new duplicate in Y. So we get this. We'll place this nicely. We'll rotate it a bit, and you know, then we have a circular looking crystal. Not a circular looking crystal. That looks cool. It's a cool looking crystal. Uh, you can angle it a bit. You don't have to do it, but if you want, you can. Yes, yeah, that looks fun. Uh, I turn off the grid, uh, we don't want it. Before we do any shading on this one, we are gonna set up a simple camera and light setup. So we can always look through it and we can see the progression. So let's create a camera, go to create camera. And we are gonna move it in Z. And we're gonna look through the camera that looks good let's lo rotate this crystal so we find like a cool area to look at okay we have our crystal we have our camera let's lock the camera so we don't accidentally move it okay now we have our camera locked and ready let's uh, let's create a dome light as our environment turn off the enable background and assign an HDRI uh, it doesn't have to be the specific one that I'm using right now. Uh, you can use anything you want, but I'll show you what I'm using. I'm using the HDRI from HDRI Labs called uh, Industry. 
old industrial hob. This is the HDRI that I'm going to use. I found this to be very neutral and it has a nice fill from the top and a nice little darker brownish looking bounce from the bottom, which I like. You can click on the dome map and navigate to your navigate to your file. So now you have the HDRI connected. Let's do a render and see how it looks. Open up a Redshift render window by clicking on RV on the Redshift tab. Uh, let's render. Yeah, it's rendering from the perspective. Let's switch to our camera. It looks even and flat. That's why we're gonna need another light. Let's turn on the progressive render on so we can see when we move the light around how it affects our crystal. That's our light. Let's hold J and rotate from the X so it snaps to 45 degree angles. Okay, we're getting something. We don't get enough light, so we're gonna increase it a bit so we get some, yes, highlights. Yeah, much better. So we have some highlights coming in and we have like uh, fill areas. This looks good. Let's save this scene. Uh, now we have the lights and everything set up and the crystal is in a nice place. Let's start playing around with the shader. Oh yeah, we forgot to name our shader. Let's name the shader. So I want the edge, I want the base to be dark and tip to be kind of bright and red. So we're going to use a ramp to create that effect on the diffuse. I'm going to connect a ramp to the diffuse. So I'm going to click this box and I'm going to connect it to a ramp which is this one. Now we have a ramp. You can see how it gets affected right here. This is the dark area and this is the bright area. So this is gonna be a red. Okay, we're gonna stick to red and it's gonna be pretty dark. A dark red, yep, looks good. And this would be, uh, this would be a more of a dark blue. That looks good. I'm gonna bring this up slightly so you can see the transition happening. See, we have a nice transition going on. That's good. Maybe make this dark a bit as well. So we have three colors. We have dark. We have dark blue in the middle. A black on the base, and then the bright red on the top. That's good. Okay, we are done with the base. I mean, we are done with the diffuse. And we are not going to change anything in here. We are going to change the roughness. We are going to change the BRDF to GGX. We are going to change the anisotropy to minus 0.75. And the rotation to 0.3. And the Fresnel type to metalness. Okay, now what we are going to do is we are going to connect a ramp to the reflectivity. Let's do that. This is where the iridescence is going to happen. So I'm going to click on the texture box and I'm going to connect a ramp node, normal 2D ramp node, nothing new. And I'm going to set the preset to rainbow. Replace. So this is what, what we have right now. It's the same as last time. Uh, so this one is running through the base to the tip. But this ramp, we don't want it to work like that. We want this ramp to work based on the camera angle so anything that faces us would be blue or red and as it fades away it will be the other side of the ramp uh, we're going to open the hyper shader we are going to frame our alien crystal and that's what we have right now so we have the ramp one this is going to diffuse the red and blue one and this is the ramp that we just created the rainbow ramp so the first things first, we are going to get rid of this texture placement, placement node. And we are going to create a new node called sampler info. This one. So we are going to connect the facing ratio to both U, U and V code. And that's what we get. So what's happening right now is if we check our ramp, anything that faces the camera is going to be blue. That's what we going to show you. And, and, and as it fades away, it's going to look red. See? Cool. So for the middleness, I'm going to connect a noise texture. There's a nice noise 
called uh, Maxon Noise that comes with Redshift. This one. So it created the node, but it didn't connect. So we're going to click on the shader and we are going to middle mouse drag the node to the middle mouse and you're going to get the connection editor. And it's going to be the out color red to the metal mouse reflection metal reflect reflection metal mouse. See that one. So yeah, now it's connected. This one's yellow. Let's close this guy. You can have like lots of different looks based on the noise, the type of the noise you're playing. Uh, you connect it. So we are going to switch to rigid multifactorial, and we're going to turn on absolute. We're not going to change any of those. We're going to change the actives to four. Then you ready this guy to 4.5. I don't know how to pronounce that. Gain to 0.77. Okay, now it looks good, but it looks too small. Like the variation looks too small for me. So I'm going to go into the output, sorry, input, and change the scale. Yeah, something like that looks good. Yep, that's what we are going for. I think. I like the scale. If you want to change the scale, you can. I'm going to round this out by putting four there. So we have nice round values. So even though we have this right now, we are still not getting the depth that we see in our shader. See, see this, this has like a, this has a little depth, right? Right here, you can see it's not just a flat uh, liquid. It, it's kind of rounding off, even though the crystal is flat. So to do that, we are going to use a bump map. We're going to use the same noise that we just created as a bump on the shader. So let's go to Redshift. Let's do this guy. Redshift, Redshift bump node. Sorry, Redshift bump map. Yeah. And connect this noise into the bump input. And connect the bump input, I mean the bump node output to the bump input on the shader. You're not seeing much here. Let's scale up the height of the bump to like 0.3, I guess. Okay, now we're starting to see the depth. Yep, that looks pretty nice. You're getting that roundish feeling on the noise. See? Yeah, that's nice. Okay, cool. We need the crystal to have a shiny outer surface and these. Uh, Iridescence liquid look to be like an internal thing. So that creates the depth. For that, we're going to go into coatings, general, and add a coat on top of this one. And bring the roughness to 0.3. Sorry, 0 0.06. We don't want it to be that rough. We want it to be pretty shiny. And we're done. I hope you learned something new from this. Please like, share and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And as usual, feel free to comment if you had any trouble doing this tune or if you got any request for my future videos. Thank you.